your life. Okay. Okay, we can start. We can start okay. to chat. Hey, everybody. We are here. Yeah. What are we going to talk about today, Matt? Um, well, we've got a few things to talk about. Um, first off, let's find out who's here and where they're from. Well, we can start talking about our project boat. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Where are we at on it? So uh, we're talking about the uh, Polar Bay 19-foot that we bought. Um, we got the trailers pretty much done, and the boat's back on the trailer. It's at our shop, and we are working on it. We got the... We have a bunch of components that are already in. We're waiting on some other parts that we ordered, but the main thing is I'm hoping that the engine which I'm pretty excited about, will be here next week, I'm hoping. And what we ordered was a 200 horsepower Yamaha DEC. And what that means is that everything on it is digital. So the steering is digital, there's no hydraulics, there's no cables. The throttle is all digital and it has the capability of being expanded in the future we could add an autopilot and a joystick, which is really interesting because normally for a joystick drive boat, you need more than two engines. Well, Yamaha has figured out how to do it with one. And so um, we may add that in the future. But right now, uh, I'm hoping next week, next week's gonna be kind of busy, but I'm still hoping to get some things done. We need to get the old engine off. It's all been disconnected. All the rigging has been removed from the boat and uh, we need to start cleaning things up and getting some holes filled and then we are going to start mounting things and putting things together. We can put the jack plate on, we can put, uh, we bought a 12 inch uh, Simrad display um, and that's going to have two transducers hooked up to it, one for uh, deep water and one for you know normal range and that's so that uh, if we use the boat and go out deep dropping you know, we'll be able to see what we can see. And um, uh, got a new cover for it. A couple other things. Still looking for a, a FM radio and speakers for it. Haven't decided on that yet. And uh, we'll wait and see what we find. Do we have everything else in order? Uh, the other, what else? The, car, the cover came in the other day. Um, we have to have the seat back repaired, a new one made, but everything else I think is, we're almost ready to go. Just a matter of time. Oh, the uh, VHF radio is still on order. Okay. So. We haven't received it yet. Yep. Yeah. Hi, Roy. How are you doing today? And it looks like Ed from Corpus Christi. How are you? Thanks so much. We appreciate the positive feedback about our videos. It's a work in progress. It's a lot of work doing videos. Yeah, for sure. It's not always easy. And we miss some of the best moments, of course, because our timing is off a little bit. But yeah, we do the best that we can with them. Yeah, working. Yeah. So um, do you guys have any questions about our project that we're um, currently working on, our little boat? It's, um, we're hoping to have it done. When do you think it will be done, Matt? Um, I don't know, a few weeks, I would hope. We should be able to start using it. I don't know if it'll be complete, complete, but it'll be usable. Okay. So, because I want to get the, remember I want to get the uh, sea deck all put down, but that might be a little bit longer because the guy is still setting up the shop, so. Okay, great. Um, yeah, nice. It, it must be pretty hot there in Texas, I imagine. It, I know that we've been We've been melting here in Key West this summer. It was 
one of the hottest days I want to say was about a, it felt like 115 degrees and um, the hot temperature has caused problems for our cameras too yeah they don't <laughs> they get hot too fast yep, so over, then so then they're crashing yeah they overheat and shut down yeah so and so then we're trying to take out the battery we're putting them up against the fan we're putting up against the car air conditioner to try and cool them down i'm blowing in it trying to cool it down it's crazy so um but we will keep it up um yes our, our boat project is a project and um we look forward to getting it done we look forward to potentially us being able to go and enjoy it and maybe do some fishing and we're still looking for a name though we've got we've got some ideas um some people have given us some feedback and here in the next week or two um i'm gonna um put on our community tab a poll so then you know maybe we'll put like six names up there and have everybody vote and see what we come up with what's a what's a cool name so um one thing about the project that's going to be really cool, I think, is um, uh, we're going to put a jack plate on that engine. So that means that the engine can be raised up and down vertically, not just tilt trim like this, but up and down vertically. And we uh, live on the water, and so we'd be able to get it into the water in here, and we could, you know, launch the boat and then come to the house and tie it up right here and come ashore, and we could even leave it overnight or a couple days or whatever. Um, so that'd be pretty fun think um Roy um no we didn't name the boat yet we are um we're still collecting names and trying to figure that out um like I said we'll, we'll do a poll in the coming weeks so that people can um have a vote for some of the names you know I don't want to talk bad about any kind of engine um but we did do a poll for engines to put on the boat and it was an extremely interesting feedback that we got and um and actually we ended up going we thought we were going to get one engine and we ended up getting a different one so that's kind of um it's been an interesting project you know we we didn't really have any plans when we got the boat so we've just been taking it you know a day at a time and figuring out what we were gonna do you know no exact you know road map so so to speak, I guess. I mean, we had an idea what we wanted to do, but no, nothing was definite. Yes, I remember the Phoenix. Yes, the yes, rising from the ashes. Yep. Yes, yep. <laughs> I told Matt about that one for sure. Yep. So. Um, that I'll, I'll make sure that's one of the names on there. Um, we'll see. I'll, I might have to explain it to people as well. So, um, we uh, so we're not going to put a T top on it because. Uh, you know, when if you go out in the back country here, you need shade, and it's got a big bimini top on it right now that uh, I think we're going to leave for now just to provide that extra amount of shade because uh, if you can't get out of the sun out back, it, it can get pretty miserable back there. But it is, um, uh, like Carrie said, it is cooling off. Um, would you say the temperature was today? 90. Yeah, no, today it feels like 95, and that's the coolest we've had yeah. it in months. Yeah. So I think next week it's supposed to cool down into the 80s, which is, believe it or not, for us is a, a you know, cold spell. So, <laughs> yeah, cold spell. Um, or maybe a cold, I don't know what you call it, cooler. How about that? But, uh, yeah, so uh, hopefully we won't be so miserable working with it cooling off a little bit. But um, Thanks for the feedback, Roy. I know that you've been watching for, um, for quite some time, so hopefully we've gotten a little better with our... Um, with our videos, you know, it's a work in progress. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, and just when we thought we hired a young man to help us with our camera and help us with video, um, no sooner did one of our other guys get hurt. So he has not been um, working. He didn't get hurt on the job, but he got hurt on a bicycle and hasn't been able to work. And we're hope hoping that TJ can come back soon on light duty to maybe pick up and do some of the camera stuff, but we're just waiting for the doctors to approve that for him. Um, the boat will not be on a lift. Um, we, um, we have a spot where we can park it and then out behind our house is, um, we have water, but it's full of mangroves. There's, there's no access for a lift. So we can just park it out there 
is what we're thinking sometimes and have it spend the night or, you know, however many days or whatever. Um, you know, we'll just have to wait out there. You'll see some of that. Um, with time, we'll, we'll get Matt to, um, to do his drone and give you an idea of, um, you know, what it's looking like out, out in the back where we can leave it. Uh, we, he has to get approval for that here in the city of Key West because of the airports. But, um, we'll, we'll get some of that footage and, um, and add it to video so that you guys can see and be able to refer to it. Um, where are you from, John? And Ed, I see that you said that you love that key lime pie. Um, where did you have it when you were here in Key West? Or did you not make it to the Keys? It looked like you were in Miami, potentially. Um, one of the best places here in Key West, where do you think has the best key lime pie? Kermit's, I guess. You think Kermit's? Um, I used to think Better Than Sex, I think, had a really good key lime pie, but I haven't had it for many years. Um, sometimes there's too much sugar in them when, um, w when you're having them, so I, I try and stay away from the sugar. And, um, you know, today's kind of a big day in Key West. I'm sure you guys have heard about Jimmy Buffett. And um, today is, um, it's, it's been a big deal in Key West. And today they are doing um, a walk all the way down Duval Street um, for a tribute to him today starting at 5 p.m. We haven't decided if we're going to go to it or not, but... Um, it's, it's been overwhelming. Like, I'm, I mean, I haven't been downtown yet, but just reading um, all of the stuff that people have said. And um, in a couple of our videos, a couple back, um, we put the studio in there a couple times. And, and I always asked in the video, does anybody know whose building this is? Do you know what this building is? And nobody ever um, responded. So I thought that maybe I would go and do another video because it's right on the waterfront so it's um you know right where the boats and everything are you just walk right by it and you wouldn't even know but it's jimmy's recording studio that he used for years and years and years so um i guess people have been putting flowers and you know different memorabilia out there oh john you're in michigan okay Oh yeah, winterize. Yeah, you're getting the winterize, and we're hoping that we're praying for cool weather. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't winterize boats down here. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. Oh, you made it all the way down. Oh, awesome, Ed. I can't remember the place's name though. There were so many places, and I had sensory. Yeah, sensory. Yeah, I get sensory overload when I go in a mall these days because in Key West, you know, we've been here for 14 years. We don't have malls. So like when I go to a mall, I'm like completely overwhelmed and I'm like, I, I don't even look. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go already. You know, I, it's, it's too overwhelming. So I completely get it. Um, so do you guys, um, do any of you guys own your own boats besides John? Roy, do you own a boat? And, and Ed, do you own a boat? Is there any questions that we can help you guys with today? We just thought we would pop in. It's been a little while since we um, have been on. Um, so we just thought we would see, you know, it's a holiday weekend. So we weren't really, um, you know, didn't have any definitive plans or anything. So no. uh, I just decided yesterday, hey, let's do a live and, you know, see who we can connect with. Oh, Roy, you sold yours. Yeah. Probably the happiest day of your life, right? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what they tell us? <laughs> How long ago did you sell it? Yeah, well, we, well, the, I don't want to say this is, this is our second boat that we've ever owned. I don't know if you guys ever heard the story. The first boat we bought was several years ago. Um, we bought a boat from a customer who had a fire. And so they, the insurance ended up they ended up buying it from the insurance and then they sold it to us and we had fixed it for a long time. And it was not a boat. We only bought it to fix it up. So we've never owned a boat for pleasure or fun or anything. So this is gonna be an adventure for us. We're hoping that we use it. We're gonna see. Yeah, sometimes after a long week of fixing boats, the last thing I wanna do or she wants to do is get on a boat and then, you know, 
then you got to fix it, you got to clean it, you know, and with the salt water down here, it's not like you can just pull it out of the lake and put it away. It, you got to flush the motor, you got to wash, get all the salt off of it. So it's, it's a little bit different, you know, being in salt water, but we'll see. Hopefully we use it a little bit. And then if we don't, we'll figure out what we're going to do with it. Well, I don't know. Yeah, we, um, we know that we hope to be able to use it to use our drones um, as well to be able to show um, in the water footage and then um, we need to get five miles away from Key West so that Matt doesn't have to put in a request to fly. So we're hoping that we can do some of that. But, you know, if we don't, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Sometimes it's nice just to sit at home, right, and not have to do anything. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what we get ourselves into. It's... Um, um yeah i'm looking forward to doing some fishing so it should be with a 200 horsepower motor on a on a 19 foot boat it should be pretty fast <laughs> we'll, we'll get the, we'll do speed reports when we uh get it up and running but um um roy um i think robbie's marina may be able to haul a 26 foot beam mm, i thought 23 was the max um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I, I want to say, I think I have it in here. Yeah. Matt might have it. Cause I think we recently <laughs> asked for somebody. Um, he says that he has a 70 that has a 26 beam. Um, yeah, it's pretty wide for down here. There's only one place that, that potentially could. And that's Robbie's Marina. Nope. Okay. 23 and a half feet is the max width okay so you would want to get hauled um up north someplace yeah like uh Rybovich, um they can do it um uh, you know there's the miami marine uh yard can do it what about marathon do you know what mm, marathon can do know. okay marathon boat yard they might I'm, I'm not sure what size they're they're about an hour and 20 ish minutes from us they might be able to but I'm, I'm not exactly sure. What do you need to get hauled out for, Roy? And then um, Ed, um, some small John boats, yeah. You know. Oh yeah, good for you, Ed. Um, Okay, yeah. Hi, Terry. Thanks for joining us. Oh, this is Phil. Thanks for joining us, Phil. Oklahoma City. I've never had a boat. I enjoy your videos. I've, I've ridden my Harley to Daytona Beach. Wow. Oh, okay, Roy, you're boat shopping. Well, make sure that you take into consideration um, boat shopping, the, uh, where you can get it hauled, where you want to take it, because... Um, you know, if you're down here and you have an emergency, you've got to have it towed. Um, just as an example, and I'm sure that it's the same place where you are in Houston, you know, different places. But um, there, we have another boatyard, too, and I think that they do 23, too, yeah, right? It's 23. They do, yeah. That's the max you can haul out down here in the Keys. Yeah. In the Southern Keys, or, well, west, Southwest Keys. Yeah, the wider wider is harder, longer not so much. Just depends on the weight too, of course. Yeah, I think uh, I think the max is 120 tons. Um, they can they can they can handle that down here, but that's the beam is what makes the difference. Um, I just want to talk um, just a minute about the um, the batteries that we've recently been um, covering on our channel because. So often people don't realize that um, the batteries can be so dangerous and it's a very unfortunate situation for that family that had the e-bike fall off of the yacht. Um, it was probably about three weeks ago maybe. And the, um, the battery, um, the, the, if you watch the video, I'm not sure, but the bicycle had fallen in the water like 30 hours previously and then did whatever it did and it, and it happened around midnight that night and um the uh 
the importance of the batteries. One of the things when we're working on a new boat, like when we haul them out, if they've started taking on water, water the first things that we do are spray it down with fresh water to get rid of the salt water. And then very top of the list after that is removing all of the batteries if they've been exposed to salt water. Yep, that's it. What do you want to say, Matt? Well, yeah, just for instance, we we had two boats recently. We had Friday came in and those batteries were in the process of cooking off even they, they had the boat out of the water up on the on the at the yard and we got contracted to a perfect example for why go ahead i don't want to forget it anyways we had the we we got them out they were already getting hot some of them the studs and the connectors had melted so you know you got to get those off because sooner or later they they're going to if they are if they're been submerged and even though they say they're sealed batteries, they all have vents on them uh, and water gets in there and it reacts. Uh, so we've recent, we had Thriday, which was a trimaran sailboat. We had that, we had to get the batteries out of right away. And then we also had a 74, uh, you guys might've seen the video. Uh, it partially sank and um, all the batteries, we had to get those out because they were getting hot also. So just, you know, and it's, they don't always have to get wet either. You can, batteries can go into thermal runaway and it doesn't matter what chemistry they are, you know, whatever lead acid, AGM, gel, lithium ion, lipo, whatever, they can all go into thermal runaway. So just, you know, it, like Carrie said, the story about the boat that burned, it was very sad. What I was told happened, and I'll make this quick, was the e-bike the little scooter fell in the water they fished it out they put it on the back deck and then they plugged it in and that's that was probably uh, a contributing factor to the fire um, and then un unfortunately you know uh, the the family the couple of the members got burned pretty badly and um, one of them ended up dying uh, so anyways just keep an eye on your batteries make sure you take care of them if you're using lead acid, you know, make sure you water them with distilled water. Make sure you have a good battery charger and it's working properly. And, uh, you know, uh -huh. thanks, anyways. Cody. Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead. Um, so, um, um, what I wanted to tell Roy was when you're in this area and you have an emergency and you can't get out, um, if you can't get towed, the only way that they can get you out here is by crane, which I think in our videos, we might have said, um, guess how much it costs to get that boat out. And I, if I remember correctly, it was like... 30,000, 30, 32,000, something like that. Yeah, to yeah. be able to have the cranes do it. And, and then of course, um, it had gotten moved to land by a barge because they, they couldn't get it out. So those are just some things to consider. Um, when you're going with a wide beam for, you know, getting hauled out. Um, thanks, Cody. Um, I appreciate the feedback on our videos. I'm not sure how long you've been watching, but um, it's a work in progress, like I've told them earlier. Yep. Um, so what else did we want to talk oh, about so, here? You oh. know, somebody earlier mentioned that they're shopping for a boat. So let's talk about buying a boat. Yeah, um, Roy. I'm going to tell you this story, and I think it's in one of our videos coming up, but... Uh, I got a call to go to a boat, and um, the lady was in, she was upset, and I went to the boat, and she bought this boat pretty much sight unseen. She saw pictures online, and so she used the money that her father, Wilder, left her when he passed to buy this boat, mm -hmm. and I went to the boat, and the thing, it was just in terrible shape. Um, and she was very emotionally attached to it and you could tell she was very stressed out um i went there and i had to tell her uh hey you know she's like why is my boat always got water in it and I, I told her i said your boat's sinking the only reason it hasn't sank yet is because you've got a bilge pump that is kind of working i had to kind of fix the bilge pumps um two of them 
and uh, I ended up pumping out the bilge. It took about two pumps. Uh, it took about 30 minutes to pump all the water out, and then uh, you could see the water was coming in from somewhere, and I, I just told her, I said, listen, I can't work on this boat in the water. There's just too much liability. And um, I asked her, you know, how she bought it because she hadn't had it for long, and she told me, and, you know, she, she'd she been breaking down and crying a little bit, and I fin when I finally told her, I said, listen, I can't work on this boat while it's in the water because it's taking on water. I, I'm not messing with it. You, you need to get this boat hauled out as soon as possible. And I also told her, this boat's going to be a headache, and you need to sell the boat. As, as soon know, as possible. As soon as possible. <laughs> well, so, you know, she's tearing up and trying, choking back, you know, sobs and stuff and as soon as I walked out of the boat I was walking down the deck and I heard you know something like that hit the floor and then I just hear her sobbing uncontrollably and I look in the window and she's just a pile on the floor just crying and I was like ah oh, this is the worst but she um I guess took my advice and I believe she sold the boat like the very next day thank God. And, um, I don't know. I think the last I heard was it had gotten hauled out by the new owners and it was, thanks for coming by Ed. It was in rough shape or something. So anyways, if you're going to buy a boat, especially a used boat, always hire a surveyor to survey the boat. And you may even want to hire, uh, you know, if it has say diesel engines and Caterpillar or Cummings, you would hire a a mechanic to come and inspect the engines um, and they do that I know it costs money but man better safe than sorry um, I've seen it so many times where people just don't have a survey or have the engines inspected or you know and then they they get taken to the cleaners because they bought a they bought a piece of junk so yeah and the unfortunate part was that she bought the boat sight unseen so she had no idea what she what she was getting herself into, and um, oh, and she had no boat experience whatsoever. Yeah, um, it, it's unfortunate. It's probably it's that video is coming up soon. Um, it's probably one of the worst experiences Matt probably had. Matt <laughs> Matt was almost crying with the poor lady, <laughs> oh, yeah. and 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 you know what? Matt went. He got her engine started. He ran it for like fifteen minutes. And bless Matt's heart, he he didn't charge her. He uh, he told her just to sell the boat, get out of it as fast as she can, and um, you know, believe it or not, it sounds like she listened. Which you know, lots of times people don't listen when we when we warn them. Um, but you know that we all make our own choices. I want to I want to go to some questions. Jim is asking, what's the max size towable boat for Florida or in the Keys? Um, when you're saying towable, you're meaning that somebody is towing you. Well, um, we just had a 72-footer um, taken from Key West to West Palm Beach. And then... Um, no, hang on. I think he means on a trailer. Oh, on a trailer. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, I think as long as your trailer fits on the roads, right? Uh, I'm not for sure all this. I, I know that some of these really big center consoles are coming out you have to like move them at nighttime and you have to have a permit and a, a follow me truck or something you know or wide load uh, but they move boats up and down the keys all the time we see them sometimes um, they they will come in and they will uh, unload them at the yard at the yards with the travel lift and stuff so it can be done but I don't know that just driving down here I would have to research that how many feet or what the width of the trailer can be ABC gang. Hey, thanks for stopping by today. Great seeing you. I know you've watched our videos for quite some time. Um, you said that brokers and sellers aren't friends. No, not necessarily. And it's never a good idea to buy sight unseen. Um, we agree. We, we recommend getting surveyors from our experience with surveyors here in the Keys. Um, they're pretty thorough. You know, like when we went through, um, Friday, as an example, after the accident, um, you know, we're, we're checking a lot of stuff, and that's not even to buy. That's just for insurance purposes. Um, but we do recommend, you know, they can save you thousands compared to what it costs to have them done. I mean, we've seen them do surveys 
um, here. And I mean, you know, their survey takes quite a bit of time. Um, so that's why we recommend that instead of somebody going in blind and cold and, you know, not having any idea of what they're looking for. So, um, Okay, so then, um, Roy, Texas is 70 feet from toe front bumper to last. Okay, yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't know that um, without a permit. Yeah, good to know. I mean, we see big boats on, on trailers, yeah, so. They, they bring some big boats down here yeah, on I trailer. Mean, yeah, and actually, you know, you think about the race boats. Yep. Uh, um, during the race boat yeah. which November, is like November. in November. Yeah. I mean, they're bringing those race boats in here um, on trailers and stuff. So, you know, quite a few of the speed boats will be um, standing up and down, right? Or kind of sideways-ish yeah, they, on yeah, their trailers. You know, some of the big fat catamarans, they actually, the trailer, they put the boat on the trailer and then the trailer has hydraulics and actually tips the boat like this so that they can go down the road that way. Yeah. Um, I do know that the, uh, you have to take like anything over, I think, 13 feet um, from the road to the top. I believe it's 13 feet. You have to take everything off. So a radar arch, antennas, all that kind of stuff. Which we get hired to do that occasionally, and we strip down everything on the top of the boat, and uh, you know, then we put it inside and bubble wrap it or whatever. So. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any other questions for us today? Um, Cody, I'm fixing up. Okay, I'm fixing up my sailboat for cruising and installing an air conditioning. In your experience, what is the best brand, Dometic? Well, it, he's saying Dometic. Oh, Dometic. Yeah, he's he's asking a question. So yeah, Dometic. Uh, I, I I equate Dometic is like um, the Microsoft and Apple. You know how they own like the whole computing world. Well, Dometic owns like the whole air conditioning world. For every, for every, let's say, let's say, I for every ten, or maybe even twenty, Dometic product air conditioning units that I service, I'll probably only see one other brand out of all those. Um, so that goes to tell you that they really have the market cornered. So Dometic is the most, you know, there are there's Dometic, there's a, Mermaid is another one. And they make good units. Uh, Wabasto is another company. They make good units. But the thing is, if your boat comes with a Dometic product in it, trying to retrofit um, one of these other manufacturers in can be a lot of labor. So it's, you know, a lot of people don't want to spend the money to switch to something else. We sell quite a few um, air conditioners since Matt does so much air conditioning and refrigeration. Um, we actually have a couple of units in our in our shop right now. Yeah. Nope. Um, Looking so, for a home for him. Yeah, um, but D Dometic is um, very popular for boats, and and I would stick with Dometic too, um, just from experience with trying to find parts these days. You don't want to get a an off one that you can't have serviced, you know, as easily, just from own experience, anyways. And don't buy the stuff from China. Like, don't buy it. Um, yes, Terry, I agree about um, Gentry and Sons hauling a large boat. I actually had reached out to them um, some weeks ago to, for a guy that had broke down here that needed to get his boat home. Um, I was hoping to be able to connect with them, but I, I wasn't able to. Um, but definitely. Yes, when you're yes, when it comes to sailing, yes, it's good to use a brand where you can get the parts. It is so important. Don't when one of Matt's sayings is buy American. Oh, if you're in America, <laughs> buy an American-made boat. If you're in Italy, buy an Italian boat. But don't don't buy a European boat here in America. Um, I do have some clients that have them, and <laughs> well. One sold and one is for sale just because getting parts and tech support for those boats is, you know, it's it's harder by 
because now I'm dealing with time change. I'm dealing with work ethics overseas is different than here. And it, getting parts is a nightmare because, you know, a lot of these companies are in Italy or UK or wherever they are from. And now I have to try to get the parts and then the wrong parts show up or they don't send everything they said they were going to send. And it's just like, you know, you're better off buying an American made boat. I hope you heard that right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I still here. Anyways, um, Cody, yes, we are selling the ones in our shop and we can help with any um, air conditioners that you need. If you let us know what kind, Matt can order it and we can just have it drop shipped to you. So that's not a problem. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then um, um, any other questions you guys have? I don't, I don't want to take up any more time. Um, We've been going for a little bit. If you guys got, if you guys got questions, we're happy to stay. Um, anything about our projects you guys are curious about? We've got some projects, that's for sure. Yeah. We, so. we always say we're trying to manage chaos, boat chaos, so. I don't know. I have a question for you guys. I talked about that joystick for that digital Yamaha we're putting on our boat. Um, it's 15 grand for the autopilot and the joystick. Um, and it's, do you think I should just get the boat running and add that at a later date or should I do it up front? Which would be the better way to do it? And obviously we're gonna add, we're gonna shoot video of it. I kind of thought that it would be better to do it later as an upgrade because then we could shoot another video on that. So, but let me know what your thoughts are. And I know it's a lot of money. Um, <laughs> I spent more on the engine than I really wanted to, but I I just wanted reliability was the biggest thing. And I, I could have bought, I there was a couple of used engines out there that I was looking at and I was just like, you know what, forget it. And then when we were looking at a different manufacturer, I started looking at the price and the weight of the engines and it was all pretty much the same. So that's how we ended up with the Yamaha. Um, yeah, ABC, yes, 15,000 for the joystick. Yeah, for you have to buy the auto, so, we bought the engine, it's all digital, the steering, everything, the throttles, digital, everything's digital. So in theory, the, the autopilot and the joystick are 15 grand, and, but you just plug them into, there's plugs on the wire harness already, and you literally just plug them in, mount them, and you're done. Uh, obviously you have to configure, you know, and program them once you get them hooked up, but um, yeah, so, but you know, single engine boat, being able to hit the joystick to the side and it actually parks the boat right up against the dock that that would be pretty cool to see uh it's there are videos of it on youtube it's check it out um it's pretty impressive um thank you so much lee we appreciate the positive feedback um and of course we would love for you to share us with our with your friends my goal for our first year was to reach 7500 subscribers and we are on track for that yeah, we're very close. Yeah, we're so. very close. And um, our one year for posting videos is September 23rd. So um, so we're very close to hitting that target, which is um, super exciting. Um, anyways, um, um, Wolfgang, yes, 15,000. We covered that. Terry, thank you so much for the feedback. Um, John, you asked how many horse. For our project boat, we're putting on... So I went with the 200 horsepower engine and there's some reasons for that. So, and these are similar for Suzuki also. So the 150 horsepower engines, the 175 and the 200 are all the same engine and they all weigh the same. It just depends on how they deliver the fuel. Um, so, you know, why should I pay, you know, Granted, the, the 200 horsepower does cost a little bit more than the 150, but it, it wasn't that much. So if you're gonna have the same weight, why not pay the extra and get the 200 horses because it's 50 more horse and you're not pushing the engine as hard. Uh, I did some research. I did look at Yamaha and Suzuki 140s and uh, I, it's that, that size, that engine is smaller and it, it was, I, I have a friend that has one on his boat and he's, he's, he says it's a dog it's underpowered and his boat's 20 feet. So I'm like, well, my boat's 19 feet. I'm not gonna, if his is dogging out and not enough power, then I'm not gonna put that on there. So that's how we ended up with the 200 horse. And actually we have a video coming up where we interviewed 
the guy from the place where we bought it. Oh yeah. And, and Joe. he, yeah, he, um, he kind of explained some of the different things to us and, and we got it recorded. Um, so we'll be sharing that, um, so that we, he helped us decide on some of the best options at this point in time. He came and looked at the boat and, um, and we stood there talking about, you know, what, what we should do and some of the, the different things to keep in mind. Um, so, um, um, ABC says cheaper than repairing damage. Yes, for sure. The joystick is cheaper than repairing somebody's boat because of a problem. E exactly. We figured we would wait to see how much we're using the boat. Yeah. Um, you know, if we're going to be using the boat a lot, then, you know, perfect. But Matt and I aren't sure how much we're going to be using the boat. So we need to, you know, we need to be thinking about that. And then also there's the potential that we may let our guys use the boat too. So, you know, these are things that we have to weigh out to, you know, decide if it's a good investment or not to, you know, for this little boat. So, you know, we haven't had a plan, like we've said, we've just kind of flew by the seat of our pants with what we're accomplishing. And, um, you know, we're just taking it, you know, every, you know, day by day. So, um, Yes, more power, 200 horsepower. So I guess we'll be flying. Yep. I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking we're going to be going. <laughs> Thank goodness I bought all new life jackets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my. I'll put two on for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, would a vinyl wrap be a good way to protect gel coat from oxidation and UV? Sure. Absolutely. In fact, I'm thinking about having a wrap put on this boat. I want a deck, sea deck which is the composite foam kind of decking you can put up on top. I want to have that done all on the top of the boat, and I'm thinking about having a wrap, um, I don't know, maybe a, our YouTube channel or something on the sides. We'll see. But, mm -hmm. yeah, um, you know, anytime you can keep the sun off is a good thing. And, and you know, also um, you're saving because you're not having the compound and wax it every year, twice a year, you know, however often you do that. So that's important too, because that's cost that um, you're not gonna have to worry about. True, when plus, you When you have a wrap. Yeah. Plus when you compound, you're, at, you're actually removing the outer layer of oxidized gel coat. Yeah. So um, you, it gets thinner and Th thinner over the years. Yeah. I mean, we have customers' boats that we, you know, have to tell them that we can't compound anymore because the gel coat's just gotten too thin. So we just, we just put some wax on, you know, by hand. So it's something to consider. Um, so I'm thinking about doing a, 40, a 704 mechanical throttle upgrade instead of a side console mount controller box for it. Good idea or a pain. He has a 1990 85 horsepower two stroke. Um. So, you, so you're looking to upgrade your motor that's 33 years old? Are we reading that right, um, Honey Bun? Eventually. All right. Are, are you in salt water or are you in fresh water? It's gotta be fresh water. Take it easy. Oh, Great Lakes. Okay. Yeah. So. Did you did you see that they just discovered that oh, that yeah. that wreckage that is like all in one piece in Lake Michigan? Yeah, the Endeavor, is what you said the name of it was. It was a ship. They I found don't, it. Yeah, they, it was in the newspaper today, the New York Times. I want to say, yes, not that far. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So the the. Here's the thing about the outboard motor and upgrading it. It's already 33 years old. Parts, finding parts, I don't know, maybe maybe up there is a little easier than down here, but you're not gonna find those motors down here because they're not gonna last in the salt water. Um, but my advice would be to think long and hard before upgrading a 33-year-old motor. Just something to think about. Um, if somebody called me and asked me down here to come work on an outboard motor that was 33 years old, I would tell them no. Um, just because from experience, 
with the salt water, and I know it's different in fresh water, um, uh, I just wouldn't do it because of the liability because I know it's going to not, the, the job's going to go south and they're not going to be happy and it's going to end up costing me money. So, mm -hmm. but that's something interesting actually I've seen happen a few times is people will buy an old cruiser up there on Lake Michigan or the Great Lakes anywhere and they will actually bring it down here to Key West and then the phone calls start, they start calling, they're like, Matt, everything in my boat is falling apart, it's not working right, and it's because those older boats, you know, they were they were built for Lake Mich or Great Lakes use, freshwater use, and after being, you know, some of them are 20, 30 years old, and they bring them down, they bring them down here in the salt water, and it just eats them. Uh, the engines can't handle it, the running gear, everything, you know, so just something interesting to think about. Um, he says, okay, fair point. I know it's the saltwater model engine. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, you could sink a whole bunch of money into a 33-year-old motor and then, you know, how, how much life are you going to get out of that thing yet is, I guess, the main point. Yeah. Know? Okay, guys. Hey, we're going to wrap it up here. I thank you so much for coming and joining us today on this crazy adventure that we're on. That's for yeah. sure. And appreciate all your comments. We love the comments. I'm the one that gets to answer all the comments. So um, I love it. Sometimes, you know, some of what you guys say just cracks us up. Yeah. But sure. um, I try to respond to everybody. Anyways, thank you so much. All right. Take care. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.